Hello there, it's Sandy Almock with a cute shark valentine card today with some fun watercolor pencil techniques that surprised even me. I picked up this shark stamp from Avery L. a while ago and you can put the heart in there, you can put a broken heart with a bite out of it in his arms or his fins I guess, not his arms. And I decided to put the one that has the hook in it. And all I had to do was mask out those two arm pieces and stamp the little heart on top of it. So any of the images that you decide you want to put in his arms, that's a real easy way to get it to fit in there. And then I took some watercolor pencils from Albrecht Durer and started doing my coloring with them. Now watercolor pencils, you can do the whole shark in one color and just get lighter and lighter with your pressure or you can do what I've done here and use a lighter pencil for the lighter areas and darker pencil for the darker. Watercolor pencils are one of those things that's pretty forgiving so you can actually do that with one pencil rather than both. The white part of his body I did actually add some color to because there is color in white but I added a warm gray there where I have a cooler grays on the darker body part. That's going to help to define them so that they're different from each other. And then just using a brush. This is a number eight black velvet silver brush. And I love these brushes. The black velvets are beautiful. This one is a number eight. And the pencils water out so nicely. If you haven't seen any, any of my videos with these before, this angle really shows it off really well. I've kind of started doing this new thing in my filming because maybe it'll help to see it a little bit more closely and get a little better view of what's actually going on and how I'm kind of holding the brush at whatever angle I'm holding it at, etc. So hopefully that is helpful. Just spread that color around and remember that your brush is picking up color. So be aware of that as you're moving it around. So if you end up not wanting to put extra color somewhere, you don't end up doing so. But then here I have extra color on my brush. So I just added it to the rest of the shark's body to give him more shading. So I'm just using some of that color that I'm picking up and moving it around on top of the color that's already there. Now this is the fun, crazy part. I had this idea and part of it didn't work and part of it did, so I'll show you both. I wanted to have a light blue sky behind him and then some dark blue in the water. And I'm using a tea strainer, which I talk about a good bit in the watercolor pencil jumpstart class. And one of the things that happened was the sky is kind of a weird grayish blue color, not because of the pencil I chose, but the last time I used my strainer, Apparently, I had a gray or a black color in it, so that looks pretty garbagey. But I decided since I already had this paper started, I was going to proceed with the bottom part anyway because I wanted to see what was going to work here. I had this this little idea in my head of moving around, moving around my with my brush some of that pigment that I shave put the shavings on for, and then spray it and see what happens and it really looked like a wave, which was really cool. So I took some of the darker color and decided to add it over top of the yucky color in the sky and see if that would recover the sky portion up there so that it didn't look all weird and grayish, etc. And it worked fairly well. I knew that I was going to trim this down, however, so I didn't worry about going all the way to the edges and making everything perfect. So once it was dry, I took a die and traced around it because I wanted him to basically pop out of the die. So I traced around it and then I'm going to cut further inside than my pencil line. And you'll see why in just a moment. But I want to cut all the way inside, maybe a quarter inch or so from that outside line. So that then I can slide it in here and slide it so the die itself is underneath of him because I don't want it to cut through his head but I want it to cut everywhere else and then I can just line the circle up and then when I run it through my die cutting machine through my Gemini Junior then he's popped out of the top. So I've got a circle that's bigger than the circle there 
and I'm going to hang it off the top of my folded card base and tape it down so that it stays in place. And that's going to allow for a folding round card. I haven't done one of these in quite a while, so I thought that would be a fun thing for you to see and to be reminded of that you can make round cards. And then I'm going to put my card straight down so that I have it horizontal and know exactly where my little shark is going to be at and the angle he's going to be sitting at. And I realized I had not colored the heart and the mouth, so if you were worried about that, I did get to it. And then I had a piece of twine. I'm almost out of this white twine that I've been using for a couple of years. It was a huge spool and now it's just about gone, so I'm starting to panic. And I wanted red twine and I didn't have any, so I just colored it with my Copics. And then I poked a couple holes around the hook that he's holding so I could tie a bow onto it. And I have one tail that's really long and one that I'm gonna cut off right there really short so that the long tail can be attached to the sentiment. So the sentiment, I stamped and trimmed out a banner by hand, and then I added it to a layer of black and then trimmed that out so it would really pop. And then before I adhered it down, I wound the long end of my string around the sentiment and then trimmed off the edge of that to go with the end, edge of the card nicely, pressed it all down and it's just about ready to go. I put a round uh, layer on the inside so that I can write on something, but I thought it was really cute to make this happy little shark holding a hook and <laughs> tied to the sentiment. And when you're making a round card, if you take a little whack off of the back side of the card and make it flat so it's not a perfectly round thing, then that leaves the front card being round but it can stand up on a shelf when you send it to your recipient without rolling off the counter. So there you go. A few tips on making a card like that. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click that like button because I really love to see the likes on there. It lets me know that you're enjoying what I'm producing. I'll see you again very soon in a new video. Bye-bye.